Oh, great. Recording. Uh, last type of loop is a conditional loop. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, conditional loop. So, we already know how basically to make code run more than once if we put it inside of curly brackets like that. Let's say I want to run this code 20 times. There's a couple ways to do it. One we already learned. Okay, and that was to use this word called for instead of if. And we would write three lines of code in these brackets. The first one would be making a variable to start our count at. So I'm gonna start mine at one. Uh, the second line would be the condition for how long it should run. So I'll say I want it to run as long as i is less than, um, less than or equal to 10, for instance. And then the third line inside those brackets should be how much to count i up by. So I'm gonna say i equals i plus one. So that will make it say hello 10 times on the screen. Let me see if that runs, it does, and it says hello, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 times. Perfect, okay? So that's called a counted loop. And uh, I actually don't want to talk about that today because we already talked about a counted loop. The other good thing about the counted loop was <coughs> If we put the actual name of the variable there, we could see it counting for us, which is pretty useful as well. One, two, three, four, five. So that loop is the most useful one in my opinion. Now there is a second type of loop that's called a conditional loop, and it uses the word while, and it only needs one line of code in there. It needs a condition to be true. So if I just write true, it'll run forever. <coughs> there it goes. It will run as long as the brackets are true and they're always true. If I put uh, one in there, it will also, one stands for true in C++. So it also runs forever. If I put false in here, it will never run and it will just quit my program. Okay. And if I put some sort of condition in here, like four is greater than three, it will run forever because that is true. So what's the point of this loop then? The point is you have to use variables. So I'm gonna write int n equals zero like that. And I'm gonna say as long as n is greater than five. No, as long as while n is less than five, run it. And so that's gonna run forever. Okay. But now the trick in the while loop is actually to make n go up by one. So I'm just gonna write n plus plus, and hopefully it should stop it at five. And there it did, awesome. So I could also, it's much, it's very much like the for loop, except you have to make your own variables. I could put n here. Actually, see how it starts at zero, one, two, three, four. Convince yourself why it did that. If I put n over here on this side, it would count from one to five instead of zero to four. Um, that's good. I think the most important use for a while loop is this. It's getting someone to type something in. Okay. Like for example, let's say I, um, I want someone to type in a string, okay? String name, all right? So I'm gonna send him a message that says type in your name, okay? And then I'm gonna get that name. So let's get rid of my while loop altogether right now. Just gonna run this code. I forgot my semicolon here. And it's gonna ask me to type in a name and that's all it's gonna do, okay? Um, now I'm gonna put a while loop in here and I'll, I'm gonna say while name does not equal, let's say I want 
named Roger. Okay. So this loop's gonna run until the person types in the name Roger. <coughs> Can't believe you two. Late. Okay, I'm recording, so be quiet. Okay, so I'm gonna send a message to this person that says, you aren't Roger? Then who are you? Okay, and then I'm gonna have another C in command here. So basically this program is gonna run and every time you put in a name other than Roger, it will say, I don't know you, or you aren't Roger. Let's try it. This is kind of how your like password program works on your thing, right? Like it checks to see if you typed in the right name and if it doesn't, if you didn't, it just gives you a message and asks you to do it all over again. So type in your name, Doug. You aren't Roger, then who are you? Okay, type in a name. Alex, no. I'm just typing all the kids that were late here. Mm -hmm. All right, but if I type in Roger, it stops the code because this while loop is now going to stop because the name does equal Roger, so it's, it's, it's going to be false. And now my code quits, but I could... You know, I know the while loop is over if they typed in Roger, so I could give them a little message and say, oh, hi, Roger. Now, let's see if um, capital letters matter. Ask yourself right now before I run this, if you think it makes a difference if I type Roger with a little r or a big r. Do you think the computer cares? Let's have a look. Tyler. Maria. Uh, Davis. Roger with a little r. Okay. Didn't work. It needs the capital. And then it runs. Okay. If I wanted to make sure that little Roger worked too, I could put an or command here. Or name is not equal to little Roger. Then it would work. So I could make use of the or statement from those if ones. So if I type in little Roger now, it runs. Oh. Hmm. Uh, or name not equal. Wait, 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 wait. Sorry. Little Roger? Roger. Roger. <laughs> Roger. I'll have to look into why. Wait. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I broke my program. <laughs> That's not right. <laughs> or... Oh, okay. And, I need an and, sorry guys. Roger Dodger, there we go, boom. Oh, hi Roger, perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna send that along the line. 